having enough quality players to finish this thing. Josh Gordon going back to the Seahawks. The Seahawks claimed Gordon last season after being waived by the Patriots. Gordon played in one game with Seattle before being suspended in the league in December. Sorry, I got the wrong video here. We'll get the right video up in a second. For a fifth time for violating the league's drug policy, Gordon applied to be reinstated over the summer. All right, so if the Kentucky Derby ran back in May when it was scheduled. There may have been a lot more speculation and arguments as to who could win. Instead, the one name you're going to hear over and over and over again, Tis the Law. Not only has a three-year-old ran consistently fast in all four of his starts since February, he's won them all, including the Belmont in June, Traverse Stakes last month in August. So Tis the Law drew post 17 for the mile and a quarter run on Saturday, taking a look at the rest of the field. The second and third choices will be starting right alongside Tis the Law with Honor AP in the 16th spot and Bob Baffert's Authentic all the way on the outside in post position 18. All right, let's get you ready for the Derby. Bring in our experts, Jody Dimling, Gene Menez, and hammering Hank Goldberg. Uh, Hank, I want to start with you because much like the rest of the sports world, the Derby, of course, will be running completely off schedule from when it was supposed to. Four months later, it will also not have any fans. So, Hank, tell me, how do you think the Kentucky Derby will be different now running in August as opposed to early May? Well, no fans is a big thing. Uh, although I don't think it matters much to the participants in the race but well the, the trainers had like Bob Baffert who's been to many derbies and won his share had to adjust his schedule because he's normally getting ready for the first Saturday in May not the first Saturday in September and so for example his horse authentic who almost lost his last race at Monmouth uh, the Haskell when uh, New York uh, traffic almost caught him at the wire. In fact, the rider on New York traffic thought he had won the race. But uh, Authentic, uh, Baffert said he was not 100% sharp for that race, but he is 100% sharp for this race. So that's one example of how things have changed. Even Bob Baffert had to make an adjustment in his training schedule. All right, Jody, let me ask Bob you. Go ahead. Yeah, Bob Baffert made a great point at that as well because a lot of these horses, I, I went through the field, I think 12 of the 18 horses wouldn't have been in the Derby in May. They weren't even ready for the Derby. But Baffert made a good point that his horse authentic, like a lot of other horses, they're right now prepared if they wanted to, if they could, they would run against older horses because they're more mature than they were back in May. Back in May, they were still kind of babies. Now they're getting more mature than that. So I think it's a little bit different. And, and like Hank said, I don't think the fans is a huge thing. I'm here at Churchill. It's just really weird to be here and have no other fans around. But uh, but I don't think it's it's anything for the uh, for the folks that are in the race, especially the horses. Yeah, these three-year-olds uh, right now are like seniors versus in May when they would have been like sophomores. <laughs> you know, there were a bunch of horses in the race that wouldn't have been in the race in May, and there were a bunch of horses that would have been in the race in May that are not in the race on Saturday. Uh, horses in the race on Saturday have more established form, and we know more about them. In the case with Tizlaw, he's had to keep his form good for seven months, and he's basically gone a year now without a significant layoff. And we'll see if that'll affect him on Saturday. All right, Gene, you said uh, they're kind of like seniors now. So tis the law, I guess, would be the valedictorian. Hank, let me ask you this. Tis the law, the odds on favorite three to five. How confident are you that horse can get its fifth win since February? Well, I'm very confident in him and his trainer and the Shakatoga group. They've been down this road before. And uh, this is home for them. Uh, basically, uh, it, well, I mean, Saratoga Springs is home for them. Uh, but th this is uh, no big deal. They have brought him along very carefully. He has not had all that many races where it could affect him, maybe the Preakness, uh, which comes up in another month. And, uh, and it, it, the good question is, will he run in the Breeders' Cup? Uh, if he wins the Triple Crown. And remember, one leg of the Triple Crown is already decided for the source, and he won uh, the Belmont. So he has not been tested as far as endurance is concerned just yet.
I, I like his chances a lot. But this has created a little bit of a strategy situation for the two jockeys who are around him. You've got Mike Smith just inside him on the Honor AP. And just outside of him, you've got John Velasquez riding the Baffert, the Baffert horse. And they have to make a decision, as, as Baffert knows, he thinks that this horse is unbeatable unless he gets cut off early and has to do something he hasn't had to do before, which has come from off the pace, come from behind. And so those two veteran jockeys might want to gang up on Franco early and make sure that he doesn't get off to a good start on Tis the Law. But then they sacrifice their own horses because Authentic needs lead. <clears throat> and they're going to have to gun him from out there. So that's the dilemma that those jockeys find themselves in. Tis the Law is obviously a deserving favorite. He's only lost once. Uh, he's been unbeatable this year. Uh, he's basically faster than these, and that's what you're looking for in the Kentucky Derby. He also has tactical speed. He can be close to the lead, or he can sit back a little bit, and that's going to pay dividends on Saturday. The only concern with him is if he's going to be five wide on both turns, he's going to have to be much the best, much better than the rest of these if he's going to get that kind of trip, and he just might be. Well, Gene, you pointed Gene pointed out the fact that he did lose once. That was here at Churchill Downs in November last year, the Ducky Jockey Club. I still don't think it really matters. I have been on him all year. There was only one horse that I thought could beat him in the Kentucky Derby, and unfortunately for trainer Tommy Drury, he had to scratch Art Collector on Tuesday before the draw. I thought Art Collector was the horse that could beat him. I'm not sure anybody else in this field can beat him. The one, the interesting, interesting thing, and, and the trainers have said it might not matter because they kind of have a new starting gate this year uh, at Churchill Downs, and it changes things. But the post position 17 that Tis the Law will be breaking from is 0 for 41 in the Kentucky Derby, and that's a pretty good test sample. 41 times and no horses have won out of that post position. Absolutely. All right. You talked about the post positions and, and Hank kind of touched on it as well. And I want to dive into that. So as you mentioned, tis the law post position 17, Bob Baffert's authentic all the way on the outside on 18 honor AP and the 16 spot. Uh, since Hank mentioned this, Jody and Gene, I want to talk to you about it. Jody, we'll start with you. All the favorites there on the outside. So how is that going to affect this race and the tactic of the jockeys? First of all, I would have loved to have booked the odds on the three favorites getting 16, 17, and 18 in the Kentucky Derby when there's an 18-horse field. I think it affects it, and in, in, in just like uh, just like Hank said, I think it affects it that Mike Smith is going to have to, on Authentic, is going to have to, in, I mean, on Honor AP, is going to have to make a decision. Am I going to kind of go out? Is Authentic going to go out? Are these two horses, uh, who are both forwardly placed horses, um, what are they going to do with Tis the Law in the middle of those two horses? And it's also very interesting on the flip side that a lot of the horses that come from behind are down on the rail, kind of inside from seven on in. So do those horses take back even further and make it easier for the outside horses to get to the front and get over near the rail? I think that's probably what's going to happen, but I do think it's going to be a little speed up front and maybe a little faster pace than what Tis the Law wants. Yeah, I agree with Jody. But one thing, I think authentic, there really is only one decision, and that's to go. John Velasquez is a forwardly, likes to be forwardly placed, and authentic has the best speed in the race. I don't think he wants to mess around with trying to see where everybody is leaving the starting gate. I think he's going to go. And I tell you what, if they let him go, he could go a long way. Uh, he's improving. Uh, he's gotten faster. His Haskell, I think, looked better, looks better than it looked like, uh, than it looks on paper. So he's going to have to go. Obviously, tis the law, and I mentioned it before. I'm not sure how he's going to save ground from the number 17 post. I counted at least five horses that have about the same speed as him. So he's going to be caught wide going into the first turn, and we'll see around the second turn. But definitely, when the starting gates open on Saturday, you're going to want to keep an eye out on those far four outside post positions. All right, we've talked a lot about the three favorites uh, in the Derby. Let's talk about maybe some other horses you guys are going to keep an eye on. Hank, we'll start with you. Which horses are you watching besides the favorites? Well, you talked about the three of those outside horses. You left out the fourth, New York Traffic. 
this is a very consistent racehorse who likes to run just off the pace. He's been second in his last three races. He was second in the win. He was second in the Louisiana Derby where, you know, the Wells horse got out there and just didn't look back. And he was second in the Haskell. And he was, uh, and he almost beat the Baffert horse there. He was, he stalked him the entire way. And at the end, he was closing. And Paco Lopez, who was aboard, thought he had won the race. Two steps further, and he would have, he would have beaten the Baffert horse. So I like this horse. I think he's a, he's a good price at 20 to 1. He may be less at post time, but I think he can hit the board, and he's my opportunity to make money on this race. Uh, the only other horse who I think well, we need to talk about is number 10, 1,000 words. Baffert likes this horse a lot. Started off slow. He's training well. He's coming up to the race strong, and he thinks this horse has a good shot not to ignore him out of the 10 post, he's the one who figures to get the best trip uh, out of all those uh, ones we've mentioned already. Yeah, I agree with Hank. I agree with you. New York traffic's not going to go off at 20 to 1. Unfortunately, for those people who do like him, the odds will be lower. I do like a couple of long shots in the Derby to actually get up there and kind of hit the, hit the board. First of all, Major Fed is a one of the eight 50 to 1 shots uh, on, on the uh, morning line odds. Major Fed is a horse that it, this is his home track. Greg Foley uh, grew up here in the city of Louisville. He would be, uh, 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 it's been a long, long time since any Louisvillian has won the Kentucky Derby. Major Fed has looked great training here um, uh, at Churchill Downs. And, and I, again, I don't think he'll go off at 50 to one because a lot of the locals will make bets on Major Fed, but he has got a shot uh, to at least get up there uh, and, and and help you cash a ticket in the, in the race. And my other one is King Guillermo. King Guillermo is an interesting story. And first of all, I should preface this by saying right before I sat down, Churchill Downs sent out a release saying that King Guillermo had an unscheduled day off this morning, which is not good a couple of days before the Kentucky Derby. They're going to make a decision later today uh, if he will race or not. I'm not sure what is going on with him, but he has been training great here at Churchill Downs. He's not run since uh, the Arkansas Derby at Oakland back in May. Juan Carlo Avila, his trainer, had decided to train him up to the Kentucky Derby. And he's a great story. He is owned by five-time former Major League Baseball five-time All-Star Victor Martinez. It's his first Derby and it's his first year of having horses. So it's a pretty good job to get here in that first year. But those are two long shots that I do like. Yeah, Jody, I was on King Guillermo too before I saw this news this morning about him missing a day of training. I, the trainer called it a little problem, but two days before the Kentucky Derby, there's no such thing as a little problem. So, you know, if he's able to run, get into the starting gate, uh, he's a, he could be a major player. He won the Tampa Bay Derby at 49 to one, and he was very fast. Then he finished second to Nadal in the Arkansas Derby. Nadal at the time was considered one of the leading contenders for the Kentucky Derby, and then he took four months off. Um, now, some people might be uh, turned off by the, the four-month layoff, but this is a thin horse. He's not a robust horse, so you can't run him. He's going to end up losing weight. Uh, he's been training like a demon, at least up until today. Um, and at, in post six, he's really drawn perfectly at 20 to one. If he's able to get in the starting gate, I like him. My, the other horse I'm looking at is attachment rate, uh, trained by Dale Romans. You're looking for a three-year-old at this time of the year who's improving. He was very slow earlier this year, but he finally broke through in his last race in the Ellis Park Derby. He finished second to Art Collector, who an Art Collector would have been the second choice in uh, Saturday's race had he not had to scratch. So, uh, and uh, arguably, a, attachment rate ran just as well as our collector in the Ellis Park Derby because he was wide on both turns. Uh, and what a party it would be, Jody, in, in Louisville if Dale Romans, native uh, Louisville native Dale Romans, who is the leading uh, trainer in Churchill Downs history with 744 wins, were to win his first Kentucky Derby. You cannot win a Kentucky Derby with a 60-day layoff. End of story with that horse. They're looking for an excuse. Uh, <clears throat> that's a terrible training job, and they're training him like a rookie. <clears throat> You're worried. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to tell you a story about uh, 
Billy Turney when he had Seattle Slew. They asked him if he felt pressure going into the Derby. He said, I'd feel pressure if I didn't have Seattle Slew. Let's not kid each other. It's a race between the horses of between 10 and 18. Forget about the horses one through nine. All right, Hank laying down his own law, getting us ready for the Kentucky Derby coming up this weekend. Hank, Jody, Gene, thank you guys so much for joining us here on CBS Sports HQ, giving us your insight. If you guys would like more of their insight, head to Sportsline right now. You can join for just a dollar. The promo code is Philly. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.